Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Skyblock News. I'm your host Aurelius, and today we'll be covering a ton of information related to the Glacial Tunnels update, and more specifically, the Glacial Mine Shafts. As well, we'll be taking a deep dive into the Fossil System, as well as the 8 new pets associated with this update, and coming soon to Hypixel Skyblock. Without any further ado though, let's launch right into this. Starting off, I'm going to make the assumption that you've watched my previous video and have been able to make it to the Dwarven Base Camp. Most of what we're going to be talking about today takes place at this area, the Fossil Research Center. Basically, this is just a general location in which everything related to fossils happens. There's the Fossil Excavator over here, which we'll go over more in a few minutes, and also Dr. Stone, who will hand you your first chisel and show you some basics about how the system works. There is a little fossil guide here, but personally, I think it's better to actually see how to do this in action, rather than just read a few tooltips. Once you find a mineshaft portal by just mining in the glacial tunnels, you'll be able to enter it, and you can actually see it states some extra information. Notably, that that type of mineshaft that you get is based on what type of block you were mining at the time. You can also warp your friends into the mineshaft for the first minute that it's active, and you'll be kicked out once you hit 100 cold. Once you enter the mineshaft, though, you'll be teleported into your own little personal mini-dungeon. When entering, you might want to make sure you have a few items on you, notably the tungsten, umber, and skeleton keys. All of these items can open locks held by certain frozen corpses within the glacial mineshafts. Basically, if I go down here and I look around for a little bit, eventually I'll stumble upon somebody who looks like they basically had a pretty bad time within these mineshafts. Let me try to find somebody like that real quick. Yeah, look at this guy. He's stuck below the ice. If you want to actually get his loot, though, you'll need a tungsten key. For these, you know, mineral armor wearing guys, you're going to want to use a tungsten key. There'll be some guys in some red armor, you'll use an umber key on those. And finally, in certain special rooms, there'll be guys with blue armor, you'll need the skeleton key to open up their chests. Basically, this is entirely based off of a randomized system. They don't spawn in the same place every single time you enter into a mineshaft. They are completely different, actually, and they don't necessarily spawn at all every single time you get in. There are different amounts and also different total locations. Yeah, so basically, you can come down here, kill a bunch of stuff, whatever, and then if you start mining, maybe some of this uh, citrine, for example you get suspicious scrap, yeah. And this time I got two suspicious scrap, so it seems like it gives you two every single time, unless I have like a buff active that gives me two, which is not out of the question. Also within the mine shafts, you're able to find new uh, crystals, it seems like. I've seen Jasper and uh, Onyx already, but I guess this one's the Citrine Crystal. So that's pretty cool. Look at that, we can use it in the Dwarven Forge to make better items. In terms of loot from the frozen corpses, there's really a lot to go over. Not only can you get basic stuff like powder, for instance, or for example, tungsten, but you can also get two new enchantments, Ice Cold and Paleontologist. Ice Cold grants you cold resistance of up to 2.5, and Paleontologist increases the chances of finding a suspicious scrap when mining in the Glacite mineshafts by up to 12.5%. Both of these are pretty solid for the area, although they're not really game-changing in any particular regard. In terms of other rewards from the Glacite mineshafts, there's also this, the Glacite Shard. This comes directly from the enemies that you can find within the mineshaft, but currently it's a pretty garbage power stone power. I mean, it just gives you defense and 10 true defense. In my opinion, Bubba is better than this, and this will probably be significantly harder to get than that. I really do hope this thing gets a buff though, because I feel like it could use maybe some cold resistance or something like that if they want to make it more niche to the mining area that we're in. Once you get yourself some suspicious scrap, you'll be able to head over to the fossil excavator over in the base camp. Clicking on the excavator, we can see some important information. Notably that we'll need a chisel, which the first one can be found at Dr. Stone, she'll actually hand it to you for free, and it can be upgraded into the perfect chisel at the forge with up to 25 total charges. That is 22, and also 3 more if you're using perfect aquamarine gemstones. But once you click on the chisel and you actually get it into the excavator, you can also add your suspicious scrap. Then you can start the excavator, which basically creates a little minigame here. What you have to do is find a fossil. This isn't guaranteed every single time, as you can see this time it doesn't look like I got one, but normally after a couple attempts, you will get your hands on a fossil. When you actually get a fossil, like as shown on screen now, you'll need to uncover every single part of it in order to unlock the full thing. If you miss even one section, you won't unlock the actual fossil item, you'll just get some fossil dust. 
so make sure that you memorize the patterns that I'll show on screen in a little bit when I talk about the pets, because each pet has its own pattern. But once you get the full fossil unlocked, you'll get the item necessary in order to get the pet you need. Once you actually have the fossil item, you should bring it over to Dr. Stone and drop it into the research center. There's the helix, claw, webbed, ugly, tusk, clubbed, footprint, and spine fossils, all of which allow you to make a certain pet. We'll go over what each type is in just a moment, but there's also a fossil guide here if you ever need to catch up on how to actually participate in this system. Once you get a fossil though, you'll unlock a recipe that allows you to make a pet within the forge. Currently, none of these recipes are available to us to see, however we do know what types of pets you'll be able to unlock. Also, you're going to need to collect a second type of fossil of a specific variant in order to actually make the pet. One of these stays within the research center, and the other will turn into your new shiny pet. Whenever you collect a fossil, you'll also notice that there are these new displays on the bottom and top floor. These new displays are of the pets that you'll eventually be able to get. Clicking on the one on the right to start with, the claw fossil, we can see that it's going to end up being a little mole. This is the type of pet that you'll get out of this fossil. We don't know how specifically it's going to work yet in terms of the pet stats, but we do know that it will be a mole. Also on the right side of your screen, you can see the actual pattern you need to unlock this within the fossil excavator. For the next pet, we have the tusk fossil, and that is the mammoth pet, shockingly enough. Once again on the right side of your screen, you can see the pattern you need. Moving on, we have the ugly fossil, this one's for a goblin, and you get the gist by now on the right side of your screen, will be the pattern to unlock this specific fossil. Next up we have the helix, which is for an ammonite pet but it's a very fossilized ammonite. I'm pretty certain this will be a different variant ammonite. I'm not certain that it's just gonna be the same thing over again. Heading upstairs, we can see four more pets up here. Notably, the webbed fossil, which turns into the penguin pet, which I personally am very excited about. Next up, we have the clubbed fossil, which turns into the ankylosaur pet. This is pretty cool. I have really liked the idea that they're bringing dinosaurs into the game, and the next two will continue this pattern. Next up, we have the footprint fossil. This is something that I know a lot of people will like. It's the T-Rex pet. This one is gonna be really cool and I'm incredibly excited to see it once it's actually out. I'm pretty certain this one will end up being a combat related pet. Finally, we have the spine fossil for the Spinosaurus. This is pretty cool once again, another dinosaur. I really do like that they're going with a pretty unique theme here in terms of the pets. I like that we're getting more exotic pets as we keep going along in Skyblock. Not really simple stuff like a zombie or a skeleton. Going back in time for this is a really cool idea, and I do really think that these pets are going to be incredibly interesting in terms of their perks whenever they get announced. Overall, this update adds quite a bit to the game in the form of pets, new enchantments, and new items. I'm really excited to see how all of this shakes out when it comes to the update being moved to main, but I really do think this is a solid improvement to the game that really is deserving of a whole new version number. Overall, I think the admins did a great job on this, and I hope you really enjoyed this video. At the end of the day though, my name is Dorelius, thank you so much for watching this video till the end, and look to the future fellas, I'll see you then.